Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I suspected when I heard you speak before the UN, you said that Israel will go alone, essentially, if the international community won't. Israel will take the responsibility to uh, get rid of the nuclear weapons of Iran. I suspected that the day before, President Obama was not as um, strong in it that he thought that maybe there was some way that Iran could keep some enrichment uh, capabilities, whether it's for energy or for medical or whatever. But that's what I suspected. I suspected that's why you were so forceful the next day in saying Israel will go alone. And, of course, I hearken back to, um, to other times when you've spoken. You've spoken about Israel's right to defend itself. And at what point do you activate that right? Well, first of all, the president said that he will not give up the option to prevent Iran militarily if necessary, and I think that's important. Secondly, I don't seek a military solution. I'd be the happiest person alive if we can actually get a real dismantling of Iran's nuclear program with diplomatic means, but it has to be real. It, but it hasn't since we, since we spoke March 7, 2012. Nothing has happened. That's correct. Uh, nothing has happened at all. Except and a change of words. Except a change of words. Except a change of words plus, plus 15 months more to do whatever they exactly. want. We're, we're at the same exactly. spot. Exactly. Exactly. And I say that if they continue enriching, they're piling up enriched uranium as the negotiations proceed. I say pile up new sanctions. But I think if we can get a peaceful uh, agreement that is a true deal, a complete dismantling, no partial deals and no enrichment left, fine. They say they want it for medical isotopes. Greta. Dozens and dozens of countries, it probably reaches, a, I'm sure the number is much more than dozens, they have medical isotopes. You can buy the stuff, you can get it. Uh, you know, they say they want it for nuclear energy. Dozens, well, 17 countries, big countries, have uh, nuclear, uh, civilian nuclear energy programs, again, without the, these elements that can produce nuclear weapons. Listen, Khamenei wants nuclear weapons. Bukhani, who's a servant, wrote this book, it's in Persian. He's an open book. He wrote the book on uh, nuclear strategy, negotiations on nuclear strategy. You know what he says? I've got to read this to you. He says, he was the chief, Iran's chief nuclear negotiator between 2003 and 2005. At that time, Iran was able to hoodwink the West and build the critical facility in Isfahan that separates, that takes uranium yellow cake. It's uranium ore and converts it to enrichable form. That's how you make the bomb. And here said, here's what he said in this book. He said, while we were talking to the Europeans in Tehran, negotiating with them, we were installing equipment in Isfahan, in that nuclear conversion plant. By creating a calm environment, calm international environment, we were able to complete the work in Isfahan. That's what he said. So he says basically, I fooled you once. I'll fool you twice. You remember that? Fool me once, fool me twice, fool me thrice? We're not going to let him do it. I mean, uh, that's what this man is about. He openly says, I am deceiving you. But then we go back to the, I mean, it seems like in the United States, with the New York Times being, you know, their editorial, and the president making a phone call uh, to Rouhani and apparently trying to meet with him, it seems like we've, you know, that the United States is impressed with him in some small way, even though it wants to have things verified, but th there is a thaw there. And it seems that the history of the president, things that he has said, lack of example of actual product, um, that we're going towards the fool, fool me twice. Look, I, I, think, I think people are more careful than that. And I'm I was impressed with the fact that the president wants a real cessation of the program and a real dismantling of the program. Now, uh, I think that uh, I think the Iranians think they can get away with it. I don't think they can, because you know if we're very focused on what it is that is a true, true dismantling of the program, then they can't get away with it. And what will happen? Okay, just think about that. You do a partial deal, leave them with the nuclear capability. You remove some of the sanctions, the sanction regime collapses. So what? So you have nice editorials, you have a ceremony, a great ceremony, everybody claps hands. Two weeks later, the sanctions collapse, and Iran continues to work towards the bomb, a breakout capability. Nobody's going to benefit. Everybody will understand that. So I think people are smarter in Washington than uh, you, you think, and it's complex. Yeah, there is a desire, a natural desire, to have a real, a non 
military solution, a diplomatic solution. Who doesn't want that? But it has to be real. It can't be a fake deal. It can't be a phony deal. It can't be a partial deal. And I think that that is something that is penetrating the, the consciousness, both of the public, but also of the decision makers. You want something that will stick. You don't want a fluff ceremony that then evaporates and dissipates and we're left with nothing or worse than nothing.